Looks like it's going to rain any minute, Larry. Should we start swimming back to the shore? I don't think that the rain will reach us for some time now, Lulu. We should be able to hang out here for a while more. Rain does not bother me at all, but lightning might. Do you know what this reminds me of? I can't get the story of the flood out of my head. Flood? What flood, Fabiola? I think she is referring to the story of Noah and the Ark, found in the Holy Book, Lulu. Hey, who or what is that over there? I can't believe it! It's my old friend Oscar! Oscar Owl! How have you been, old bird? Why didn't you just fly in? I can't. I hurt my wing working on my backhand. I suffer for my tennis. So, what are we talking about, Larry? And who are these lovely ladies? My name is Faviola, Faviola Fish, and this is my friend Lulu, Lulu Turtle. Nice to meet you, Oscar. He thinks I am lovely. We were about to discuss the story of Noah and the Ark, right, Larry? Hey, I remember this story from church. It starts with the Lord looking at the world and realizing just how wicked it was. Yes, in fact, it was so bad that in order to save the earth, he had to destroy it. So God spoke to his friend Noah, the grandson of Methuselah. God then told Noah of his plans to destroy the earth, but he also told him that he had a plan of salvation for anyone that would accept it. Wait a minute, Larry. You said that Lucifer was responsible for all the death, not God, remember? Why is the story changing now? Why would our loving God become the harbinger of death? Hold your horses, pretty turtle. Yes, God allowed the destruction of the earth, but those who were destroyed were given every opportunity to be saved. Just listen, my little green angel. What Oscar is saying, Lulu, is that God had already devised a plan. He told Noah that he was going to destroy the earth with a flood. He also instructed Noah to build a giant ship, an ark, made of gopher wood. This ship was for the salvation of every species and every person who wanted to be saved. It took Moses 120 years to complete the project, and every single day he would preach to the people for them to repent, change their ways, and when the ship was ready, to get on board. That is a long time, and a giant opportunity to make the right decision, Lulu. That many years to make a decision? I guess the people who refused really did not want to be saved. God clearly gave them every opportunity to make it. Do you do this all the time, Larry? This is fun. Sitting outside in nature, discussing the Holy Word. I love this. Whenever you do this, give me a hoot. So Noah and his three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham, worked side by side to finish God's salvation ark. The quartet was ridiculed viciously by the people. You see, Noah was preaching that water would destroy the earth, and it had never even rained on earth. You see, Lulu, the holy book says that every morning, a mist came up from under the ground and watered the plants. The people could not understand the concept of rain or water coming down from the heavens. So they thought Noah was insane. Now I see why they could not understand the idea of rain. It was a myth to them. Is that why the book says that faith is the substance of things not seen? Very good, Lulu. That is an excellent point about faith. I think she's got it, folks. So finally, the ark was finished. The day to board came. Noah was fanatical about saving as many people as he could, so he begged the people. Suddenly, a huge herd of animals started to make their way to the ark. 
Seven of each species that God had ordained as clean, and two of each unclean species. What was remarkable was that the animals entered in an orderly fashion. Should not the people have known that this was not normal? Should not they have seen that was a wake-up call for them to follow onto the ark? Why did they not see the truth before their eyes? After 120 years, the people became numb to the truth. The few who believed either died, lost their faith, or allowed the ridicule of the mob to keep them from entering the ark. Obedience, getting into the ark, was the act that led to salvation. Simple belief was not enough. After the animals were in place, it was time for anyone who would to get on the ark. Unfortunately, only Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives elected to enter into the ark. So Jehovah gave everyone an opportunity to be saved? So not only was he merciful, he created the means for them to find salvation. So why could not the people see it? Remember, Lulu, we find the original promise of redemption to a sin-filled world, where God states that he would place division between his children and Satan's people. Genesis 3.15 states that God himself would put enmity or hatred between good and evil. Here, with the flood, his keeping his promise. Every person was given an opportunity to choose salvation. Almost every person on earth chose against life by refusing to enter the ark. Therefore, they chose death. God was only giving the people what they wanted. So God was justified in destroying the people? He gave the people freedom of choice and they chose death? Why do so many criticize God for sending the flood, Larry? Lulu, mostly mankind is ignorant to the facts. They never bother to read the holy book, but are still willing to render an opinion. Then they were willing to listen to the opinions of men rather than the word of God. It is no wonder that the devil has been able to distort the truth about the character of God. So, once Noah and his family entered the ark, and everyone else refused to follow, an angel of God closed the door. At this point, grace was suspended and judgment was fulfilled. So, we are to go by the word of God over the words of any man, including ministers, priests, or pope, correct? Absolutely, Lulu. God is the beginning and end of truth, and if man's opinions differ, even in the slightest, it is wrong. So, it began to rain, and rain, and rain. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, the same number of years that the children of Israel wandered the desert, the same number of days that Moses was in the mountain, and the same number of days that Jesus Christ was tempted in the desert. Then there was a great earthquake, and the water that was under the ground was brought up from the depth. Within a short period of time, the water began to raise. Eventually, every living land creature that was not in the ark was dead. How sad that the world had to end. Did it have to end? Did it have to end this way? Weren't there any alternatives to the horror, Larry? Well, Lulu, the good book says that there was violence in the land and the hearts of men were evil continually. That means that mankind's nature was impossible to change. Evil would have eventually destroyed all of nature. Lulu, there was nothing more that God could do and remain the loving, fair God that he is. He would have had to change his very nature and take away mankind's free will gift, which he granted his creations. If a corrupt Satan and his followers were removed from heaven, then how could God not remove an absolute corrupt people from his earth? 
it would not be fair. So God destroyed the earth to preserve it, to renew it, to grant those who requested death, that which they asked for, and to remain fair to all the universe. What more could he have done, Larry? It seems that not only was God justified in destroying the earth, but it was also for the best interest of everyone involved. That is unconditional love. Yes, Lulu. You are starting to understand the ways of God, and therefore, His nature. I never thought I was going to understand God. On the surface, He seems so complicated. But once you get to know Him, you realize that love describes Him. I guess I would say that He is transparent. I better be getting back before the rain and wind pick up. I hope we can do this again soon! Bye, Oscar. It was nice to meet you. See you soon, old buddy. Keep the faith! What a great owl and wise old owl he is, Larry. I guess it is time to leave. What do you think, Larry? Should we say a goodbye prayer, Larry? Sure. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent, one from another. Amen. <laughs>